Hey, welcome back to the How to Podcast series. It's Dave with you. Happy to be back here with you talking about making some money with your podcast. Hmm. If you've noticed, I've never had commercials in my podcast. If you've listened to all seven of my different shows, you'll notice there's no ads for mattresses or supplements or any of that stuff. I don't have ads in my shows, and I do that on purpose. But if you're like, Dave, this podcasting stuff costing me money, and I'd like to make a little bit of income on the side, what can I do? i got some ideas for you here on the How to Podcast series. Here we go. So I understand making a podcast can be expensive with the equipment you buy and the subscriptions to all the things and your hosting site and your website address and your Canva subscription. It just keeps going on and on, right? It seems like everyone has their hand out the moment you say, I want to start a podcast. Everyone loves your money. And although there are some things that you should think about paying for, a lot of the things that we do on podcasting can be done for free. Again, just keep in mind that anytime you use a free service, you are you are basically the product in that situation because you're not paying for it. So if you have a Facebook account, you're the product. If you have an Instagram account, you're the product. If you have a YouTube channel, you're the product. In all these situations, you're the product. Just keep that in mind. So I have several shows that are hosted for free. I use free tools like Audacity, which I'm recording into right now. I like the free version of Canva. I like YouTube because it's free. There's a lot of tools out there for you to use and to to put into practice to help your podcast. But there is going to come a point where you are going to have to pay for something. And if you move from a free host to a paid host, you get the benefit of having a team there to help you, which comes with your monthly fee. So that's that's important to some people. And I have three shows that are paid monthly fees to, to host. I love them. Uh, I use Buzz, Buzzsprout. And there's a link in the show notes if you're interested in and checking out Buzzsprout, you can get a discount through my link. I might make a small amount of money for that. I appreciate that. So I don't know if you just caught that. I just put a little money-making tip there for you. <laughs> it's just in that statement for Buzzsprout. Hmm. Did you catch that? That was kind of an ad, I guess. So if you use my Buzzsprout link, my affiliate link, I could make a little bit of money. But I have to make sure that everyone understands that clicking my link has some impact for me financially by using my link instead of going through Google and doing it that way and finding it your way, your, on your own. Using my link can make me some money in the future by you using the link that I provide to you. So that's affiliate marketing right there. Find something you use, something that your audience would be interested in. You can sign up through Amazon become part of their Amazon Associates affiliate program. You have to go through a process to to register and be approved for that. But then anytime you mention a microphone or a book or whatever, anything that's on Amazon and you talk about it and it brings value to your audience, that's a key point. They click your link, which is an affiliate link, and you need to let them know it's an affiliate that you could make small commission on the sale of that item or whatever else they seem to purchase when they're on Amazon through your link. So it's a great way to make money while you sleep. Uh, and it's very simple to add those links into your show notes, on your website, wherever you're going to put them. Just be crystal clear that anytime you give an affiliate link that you let people know that's that's the way we do things. That's the above board way to do it. It's the legal way to do it. Don't hide that you're getting paid for those links. Affiliate marketing is a great way to do some fundraising for your podcast to make some passive income. And it's embedded in your show as you fall in love with a product that your audience would also fall in love with. Remember, your audience trusts you over X number of podcast episodes. They trust you. They 
rely on you to give them the truth. They want to know that you're speaking and promoting something because you find value in it. And you can give them value by using your links to save them some money. That's a win for both people. But again, you just need to make sure that you're up front in all your dealings with any affiliate links that people know that you could make some money by them using your link. Okay, so that's one way that you can make some money with your podcast. The other thing I've been working with, and I've been putting it on my podcast, my websites and in my email addresses and things, is a simple thing like a crowdfunding tool like Buy Me a Coffee. By using Buy Me a Coffee, it's not like Patreon. Patreon's like a monthly subscription where people pay you a monthly fee on a regular basis and it just comes off their credit card and goes straight to you. Different tiers. You can offer different things through Patreon, but it requires a subscription. What I like about Buy Me a Coffee, and yes, I have a link. If you're interested, you can buy me a coffee. I drink a lot of coffee because I'm I don't sleep much. And but if you go through my link on Buy Me a Coffee, you can make a one-time donation and it comes to me. And you can set the levels of how much each donation is. People can buy multiple donations within one transaction. I had one person recently bought me 10 cups of coffee at $5 a piece. That's $50. And it just showed up in my email as a notification that, hey, you got a donation from a, from a follower and a fan of the show. And I didn't really promote it. It was just, it was easy to find on my website, easy to click through. And uh, a tip for you if you're setting up your Buy Me a Coffee is there's an option there in the settings where you can absorb any fees that your donor would be incurring by making a donation to you. You can you can kind of ingest those costs to your donor so they don't see that. And it'll kind of come out of on the back end of what you receive after any kind of fees. I would suggest that just one one layer of uh, inconvenience to your donor that you can absorb. So think about setting that up when you set up Buy Me a Coffee. Uh, that's a great site. Um, I'm always looking for donations through Buy Me a Coffee, a link in the show notes if you're interested. And it's a great way to receive income for your podcast. The other thing you can do is you can create something that you made so that you can sell. So I know I had one person on and they talked about how they make money on YouTube and they have a channel where they don't even show their face and they make income from people watching their videos. So I said to them, why, why not create an ebook about the process or something along the lines of your topic? And then put that out through Amazon, for example, and people could buy your ebook. And the other bonus is having a book, even an ebook, makes you a published author, which could possibly open the doors for you to speak, guest on podcasts around your book. Uh, it gives you one more source of income that could be coming to you as a result of you creating a an ebook. And you can actually make your entire ebook on Canva for free and build your whole ebook right there, right on Canva. It's great. You don't have to hire anybody to do this. So if you're a subject matter expert for your podcast or your coaching or whatever, think about what could you create that you could sell digitally online where people could download it, people could come to your website, People could, you could use it to open doors to get in front of new audiences as a guest on a podcast. I have a podcast for authors and you write an ebook. I'll have you on my show and you can promote your ebook right there on the podcast. Pretty simple to do from an outside point of view. I know you got to come up with the content, but create something that you can sell and people could buy. There's another, um, podcaster I'm working with and it's quite interesting. They have a coaching program and if they get one new uh, client, it could be thousands of dollars that that client brings to them for their services. 
So they have within their own podcast commercials for what they do for their coaching program. And they use their podcast as a way to build value, build community, serve their audience. But they also put in their podcast, they bake in information about their coaching program. And they use their podcast as an advertisement for their coaching business. They don't need an outside sponsor. That's not important to them. They just use their podcast to get them new clients. So if they get one new client a month, one new client a week, one new client a day, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that comes to them by building community. And it's what they're doing already. They're just not paying somebody else to go find them places to advertise their their client services. They just put it in their podcast. So if you have a gift, you have knowledge, you have expertise, you have something to share with the world, create a book, an ebook, create commercials within your show, tailor your show towards your coaching, towards your support, what you offer to the world, and expand your horizons as far as what you think podcast commercials are really like. Because you really have the opportunity yourself to be your own sponsor. And that's the best way, I think. If you go down the route of, of trying to find a sponsor for your show, which some people do, you have to understand that sponsors are looking for traditional um, demographics and numbers to support the price of the money they give you to support your podcast. If you have, let's try to use round numbers, if you have, say, 5,000 listeners that come to your podcast on a regular basis, of those 5,000 listeners, what do you think would be the conversion rate if you put in front of them, you have a podcast about um, tools and hardware and things to, to fix your home. If you put in front of your audience a link to a hammer on Amazon, how many hammers do you think you could sell from one episode? Think about it. Do if you And you could try it. Put out, sign up for an Amazon affiliate program and get the link to a hammer and put it out there in, in front of the world and see. You might have 5,000 listeners, but they not, might not be 5,000 active shoppers interested in your hammer and clicking your link and buying it. So you're, when you have an, a sponsored deal in place, your sponsor's not looking for people to listen to their ads. That's radio. <laughs> They're looking for people to do something with the ad. Click the link, sign up, come to the website, and trackable links help people to, to monitor that. They want to see results for the money that they give you. They're not just going to give you money so people can hear their ad. No, they want people to convert and they want people to buy. And if you consistently take money for an ad and no one ever buys and no one converts to, to doing the thing and supporting your sponsor, your sponsors are going to dry up because your audience isn't engaged. So if you're thinking about down the road, I'd like to do ads, then in a sense, you need to train your audience from the beginning to be actively responding to the things you put in front of them as suggested purchases, offers, and that can be, again, could be just your own product. And then be able to say to a sponsor in the future, listen, I wrote an ebook, I put it in front of my audience, and I get about five to 10 people a week buy my ebook because of my podcast. That's a number that shows engagement. If you create an ebook or you create a program or you create a discount, you put it in front of everybody in your listening audience and no one responds, your sponsors aren't looking for that kind of response. They want to see an active community interested in what they put in front of them. So keep that in mind that it's beyond a number. And the one thing I find very interesting when we talk monetization for podcasters if you think about radio for a second in comparison to podcasting, radio hosts and radio stations will say that we serve 3 million listening audience 
in our area. Okay, well, first of all, 3 million people are listening all day, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week to your radio station. There are more than one, in most cases, radio stations to pick from. And we all have lives. We're not living on the radio every day, listening to the morning drive, the, the noon recap, the afternoon office party, and the drive home, and then the evening and the overnights and the... No, no, come on. You don't listen to the radio that much. You're listening to a podcast right now. You're not listening to the radio. So if you think of the, the, the metrics that advertisers use in radio... Uh, it's really hard to measure when you say 3 million people in our listening audience. Well, again, not 3 million people listening. I bought ads for my small business when we opened our retail store, and I was paying $250, $300 a month to get five or 10, ep- five or 10 commercials um, played in rotation on the radio. And you know how much return on investment I got for that? Wait for it. Zero. I even, my wife and I even did a feature at Christmas where we donated $500 in prize money, $250 to the winner that was selected on their morning show, which is where we wanted to be featured. And the other $250 went to the charity of the choice of the winner. So then we were able to promote that charity as well. So $250 for the winner, $250 for the charity of their choice. And again, we got zero engagement from this from this endeavor on the radio. So saying that radio is more effective than podcasting for advertising, I wouldn't agree. Radio doesn't have the details that we have. We know where you're listening, what you're listening on, um, what city you're in, how long you listen to the show. Radio doesn't have that kind of stats. They don't. We do. So when you're talking to a sponsor, maybe in the future, Make sure that you you can tell them with certainty that your audience is engaged, that they will be interested in their product and service because it matches with the interests and the topic of your show. That's one way to be more successful when you talk about monetization within your podcast. The other thing you can do, like what I'm trying to do, is I take my podcast and I'm using it as a digital resume. You're hearing me right now. Everything you hear, I've done myself. I do all my own editing. I build my own websites. I do all my own graphics. Everything. I do the whole show. And why am I doing that? Because I want to be able to help others start their podcast, uh, do their editing for them, their audio, their video, help build their websites, do consulting. That's what I want to do. And I want to do more of that in the future. So, I don't have commercials for other people's things. I'd rather have a commercial for myself. So that's kind of why I do what I do here on the How to Podcast series is I want to help you with your podcast. And I have people who have reached out to me most recently and they're busy people. They understand that starting a podcast is going to cost you time or money, maybe both. They have decided that it's more worth their time Uh, and more worth their finances for someone else to do the -the behind-the-scenes stuff. They'll hit record, drop the file in a Google Drive, and they're done. I'll take care of the rest. And that's what I offer. I can do that for you. I can do all that behind-the-scenes stuff and make you sound and look great. That's my job. You hit record, and I'll take care of the rest. There's other people who just want me to train their own team on how to do the things that I do. And I'm willing to do that as well. You can reach me at howtopodcast.ca. Again, you're the commercial there. You can come to my website and set it up where I'll sit down through virtually and through a Zoom thing, do screen shares, walk through step by step of any of the steps in creating a podcast and teach your team how to do it and and train them for you so they can be in your office the next, right down the hall from you and they know how to do all the things you're hearing happening right now. I'll do that for you as well. There's many different ways that I'm trying to turn my podcasts into an income generating stream for me so that I can leave my full-time nighttime job and do this instead. Because this is where I really enjoy hanging out with you 
than working a night shift and trying to sleep during the day. It's not fun. So that's kind of my, my way of doing it. There's other methods you can do. You can join a podcast advertising network. Um, you can do all kinds of different things that are out there. Uh, just think of what works best for you and for your audience. Because doing something that will turn your audience away will not help you in the long term. You want to keep and reward your audience with great content. You want to show up to them, for them, on a regular basis and give them the quality content that you promised to do. One last tip you can do, try setting up fan merchandise for your podcast. And you're thinking, Dave, I have five listens to my podcast. Uh Uh-huh, yeah, but these are five people who love your show. So give them the opportunity to buy some swag. I use T Public, a link in the show notes, and you can go and see my dis- my versions of my things I've designed in Canva, and I just upload them to T Public, and you can buy a, one of my shirts or my hats or my all that stuff. And the beauty is, I don't have boxes of shirts here that I have to package and sell and ship. It all happens through T Public. I don't make a lot of money from that, but it's there. And if somebody somewhere in the world wants to buy something. They handle all the shipping stuff. And I just get a small amount of money in return for my efforts. And it just lives in the background. One more way for me to make money. You're like, well, I don't know if I can do that. If you can handle Canva, you can create anything. So try it. Set yourself up with one of those Printify, Printful, uh, or TeePublic, which I use, and create your own swag so that people who are interested will buy it. And when I got my first sale on TeePublic, I was like, wow, someone actually liked something I designed. That was really cool. Um, I didn't make a lot of money. I got to be totally honest. I didn't make a lot. But hey, to see that somebody liked something that I created and put out in the world beyond my podcast, it's a good feeling. So if you're thinking about starting a show, thinking about monetization early with a very small audience, let's say less than 20 people, less than 100 people listening to your show, make it easy for them. Try the buy me, buy me a coffee. Try creating your own swag through like TeePublic, print on demand websites. Try making yourself a book or take your coaching program and turn it into something that people can buy. These are some easy things that you can do without having to go find a sponsor and convince them to give you money to put an ad in your show. Those are some simple ways. If you need help with your podcast and you need some more ideas, you want to bounce your ideas off somebody, howtopodcast.ca. We'd love to meet you there and chat about your podcast and see what we can come up together with. It's great to be a podcaster. There's lots of room for you. Even if there's hundreds of people who talk about your topic, you're the only you. So please get your podcast up and running. And if you need help, I have my hand raised. We'd love to help you anytime with your podcast. This is the How to Podcast series. Thank you for listening. Catch you on the next one. Take care.